there and welcome to today's edition of Politics 101. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. And uh, we have to thank you all um, for being with us on another Friday evening. For some of you, it's Friday night. For some of you, it's Friday afternoon. Um, welcome to Politics 101. Those of you who are joining us from Guyana, welcome. Uh, welcome to our teachers. It's the last day of the uh, Easter term. And uh, Easter is here. Can you believe it? it the Easter is here. Um, welcome to you if you're joining us from Guyana. It's good to be Guyanese. It's good to be Guyanese. Those of you who are joining us from the wider Caribbean, welcome. Welcome to Politics 101. And if you're joining us from further afield, we are eternally grateful um, to you. Tonight is Friday night. Dr. Vincent Adams is uh, here already. Uh, Amanza Walton, Amanza Walton this year, who should have joined us last night, but because of the blackout, um, couldn't join us. She's going to join us tonight. So we are going to have a big program. Start sharing the link. Please start sharing the link and let everyone know we're on. We are going to continue to cover those hearings by the United Nations Human Rights Committee. The United Nations Human Rights Committee this week, of course, we saw them. Some said they grilled the government. Some say that they scolded the government. Um, whatever, whatever term you use, um, the government was put under the microscope. Guyana was put under the microscope. Guyana was put under the microscope. As you all know, I've been saying on this program, and I continue to say it, we are in a new era. We are now a petrol state. We are now a petrol state. We are now the fastest growing petrol state. We have only been pumping oil for the last five years. And the, the, the rate of growth is enormous. And so the problem is not that we are a petrol state. It's what they are doing in the petrol state. And I think we have got to join the party. We have got to join the party. Don't deny, don't deny that Guyana has changed. Whether it's change to the better or change to the worse is what we have to figure out. Welcome to Politics 101. Please share the link. I see Sister Lynette Greenwood, Chinese, my people, Annandale, Congo people, Congo Creole, Congo Creole, Congo Creole, Congo Creole. Um, Welcome to all the people from Annandale. All the people from Annandale. Yes, all the people from Annandale. Annandale North and Annandale South. Annandale North and other Congo people, Annandale South. But welcome to those who are joining us from Annandale North, as we say in our part of the world. Annandale, 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 Annandale. Welcome, welcome to Politics 101. Uh, uh, Dr. Vince Adams is here. Amanda Walton this year is also going to join us. Uh, let's 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 do what we do every Saturday night. Let's listen to some wisdom as we group up, as we group up, ready to roll, uh, ready to roll on this uh, 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 the our Friday night edition of Politics 101. I'm about to do is a song I wrote in 1989 and it's all it also speaks about alienation I hope this song would have gone away but it seems to just be coming back and coming back again it's a song I called 1990 so from the ghettos of Trinidad to the ghettos of LA same story Clear 
warhead Do I see it torn down And there's an army An army in retreat I see the old colonials of Europe Now become united And that word perestroika it fills the streets I see the eagle Sitting on the shoulder of the bear <laughs> Or maybe it's the other way around Is this the calm Before the hellfire Or is our tomorrow really heaven bound but in 1990 the blood still flows in Pavota and from Beirut to Johannesburg the river don't stop 1990 third world children still wonder in their boats in their jungles in their deserts until they draw, draw. It is strange. The more we change, the more we rearrange. Everything just seems the same as we move into the next century. 1990. Please make a liar of me. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 There is a black, a black man on the run Through a lonely, a lonely Beijing street There he goes, my God he's running again This time through Brooklyn, Howard Beach and there he runs again through the streets of Soweto and Bensonhurst. And I'm saying, Lord, <laughs> so the story goes. And the ghostly man from the past, they call him Selma, Alabama. He just struts and says, <laughs> Deja vu, I suppose. <laughs> 1990. Children stand firm, or will they keep a running and the running and the running till the end of time? 1990, will hands of love ever reach out, or will they be there just to strengthen the crime? It is strange, the more we change. We rearrange Everything just seems the same As we move into the next century 1990 Please make a liar of me Reminds me of Harlem and what's in the 60s. Same problem, same country, and king. King is still the name. People.
people shouting power power to we the people and equal rights and justice is still the game I remember over 25 years ago America stood up and said this won't happen no more now you tell me you tell me what have we become will the beast always defeat the beauty is this land just another house of the rising sun 1990 will we see a tomorrow where our children our children our children will truly be free As we move into the 21st century Before the hellfire Or is our tomorrow Really heaven bound Alabama, he just struts and says, <laughs> Deja vu, I suppose. <laughs> Ellie 
just burning down. It reminds me of Harlem and what's in the 60s. Same problem, same country and king. King is still the name. People shouting power. Power to we the people. And equal rights and justice is still the game. I remember over 25 years ago, America stood up and said, this won't happen no more. Now you tell me, you tell me, what have we become? Will the beast always defeat the beauty? Is this land just another house of the rising sun? 1990 Will we see a tomorrow Where our children, our children, our children Will truly be free 1990 Is it joy, is it sorrow As we move into the 21st century I'm saying it is strange the more we change, the more we rearrange, everything stays the same as we move into the next century, 1990. Make a believer. Oh. yes oh yes i am so glad i am so glad that god made me a guyanese and a west indian you are never going to get what you heard there just now you're never going to get that in dar es salaam you're never going to get that in madras or calcutta you're never going to get that in Nairobi, Kenya, although the origins of it is from West Africa. You're not ever going to get Calypso in Africa or India. It could only come from our Caribbean. That's why I'm so glad. Thank you, God, for making me a West Indian, making me a Caribbean person making me a Guyana, a Guyanese. The greatest music, I've said it before, when God was sharing gifts to the various parts of the world and he was giving people, he gave us the gift of the Calypso. And it was a special gift. Where are you going to dance? to serious politics, telling the story, always something to say. David Rudder, we call him majesty. King David, royalty, the poet, the poet of Calypso. Sparrow is the greatest, without, without equal. Calypso rose, Trailblaze to women, but David Rudder as a niche, the poet, the philosopher of Calypso. Must the beast always defeat the beauty? Must the beast always defeat the beauty? This past week, we saw beauty defeat the beast. As our country, Guyana, the rulers were all before the world and made to answer for their transgressions. What beauty? What beauty? 
those who oppress their people at home must answer to the world. Whatever was said there, however they said it, they are naked. They are naked. The emperor was left without clothes. The dictator, in this instance, was left without clothes. It pains. On a personal note, I, I love Sister Gail. She is somebody who introduced me in the 1970s to African prose and literature, especially coming out of South Africa. We belong to a group called Worker Stage. It was a PPP drama group. And the three of us, myself, Sir McGarrill and Busty. Busty is now dead. We left Boston and we went to Freedom House. And we said, we, we hear you all have a drama group here. And we are interested in national unity. And we come to join the drama group. And we joined the drama group. We were WPA people. We went there and joined. And we were embraced by Gail Toucher, who was the leader of the group. My wonderful friend, Shirley Edwards, who um, has moved on. She's older now. She's no longer in parliament. She's one of those African Guyanese who joined the PPP in the 60s, really committed to the party. And we are dear friends to this day. And, and, and others. That's where I met people like, like Rohi and, and Ramotar. They weren't members of the group, but the group would meet at Freedom House. There's where we used to rehearse, and so I met them. We were young people in our teens. But it pains to watch Sister Gail having to fetch water with a basket and having to fetch water for people who can't walk in our shoes. Them by, them by who she fetching water for can't walk in her shoes. But that is the that is the way politics go. I feel for her. Good evening and welcome to Politics 101. We are doing it tonight. Sister Mans is here. The blackout last night kept her away. Thank God Vincent was able to do his thing and he was able to put some light together and he, he held it forth. Uh, but the man is here, and our regular guest, Dr. Vincent Adams from Christian Borg. You all, Boston, don't think it's you all alone. Got ancestral hold on your space? Yeah. Yeah. Vincent is from Christian. He's not from Guyana, you know. I have to tell you all. When I'm in Guyana, nobody don't ask me, are you a Guyanese? <laughs> don't ask me that. By the way, you're from. Boxing. <laughs> Don't ask me. I, you're not a Guyanese when you're in Guyana. You're from Christianburg, and as Sister Manzi used to, would say, a barn in Leeds on the quarantine, and I grew up in Linden. So she got two passports. <laughs> she got two passports. Vincent got two passports because when he come to town, he never used to stay in Kingston. He used to stay in Alman Tongue. That's what them Rastaman say. Alman. Rastaman don't say Alba is tongue, you know. Alman Tongue. See, he got two passport too. He got two passport too. Both of them get two. I only get one, only Boxton. <laughs> oh, no, 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 only Boxton. And, and, and if I seek another passport, they'll put me out from Boxton. They're, they're very racial there. And, and when we say race, we just use we just use race in a different way internally. The, the, the creativity of, of our people, you know, till up to this day, if I carry any Indian friend in Boxton, hear what they say? Are you don't say Kuli in front of that time? Say Indo Guyanese. Because we introduced that term in the village in the old WPA days. You, you think you couldn't say 
Indo guy, and he sort of just teased me up to today. When 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 a, when a Indian friends are carried away Buxton, be very careful. Say Indo Guyanese. Oh, we are such a wonderful people. Good evening. Good evening to all my friends. Beto Ram Ramarak, if you are listening. Good evening, my brother. Brother Ravidev, if you're listening, good evening. And I know you all are listening. <laughs> good evening. Um, I'm gonna call also my friend who does be listening. <laughs> Clement Rohi, I know you're listening. Good evening, my brother. So, you all just said that, uh, that David Einstein, he just behaved bad, you know, he just, he just get black people worked up. According to Mr. Jack Dio, the opposition does play on people's emotions. As if it's a bad thing. I don't want to play on people's skin. I want to go beneath the skin. This is not playing around. Deep within my Caribbean belly, as David Rudder would say. I found out that Amanza is a Rudderite. That's what we Rudder, we David Rudder people, God, you know, you know, David Rudder thing, other thing he just said, welcome sisters and brothers. This is the temple of Soka. <laughs> we come here for one thing and one thing only is to get on bad. Reverend Rudder in attendance. I, 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 I have gone to a lot of Calypso shows in my time, but probably the most Calypso shows, I've, the most musical shows I've gone to is David Rudder. Wherever Rudder play, and I there, I got another day in front because the Rudder rises be in front. You got to know all the song, word for word, and so on. Uh, it's lovely to be. It's lovely to be, guys. Are you all ready? Are you all ready? Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to welcome. <laughs> I'm going to make a, I'll make a good um, MC. I, I used to MC back in the time. I used to MC. I used to MC. Let's bring in our guests and let's get going. Tonight, on a Friday night, on a Friday night, Friday night is glass case night. When you see when you see you go up on a Friday night, whether you're in Christianburg or you're in BV, Pleasance, Boxing, them glass cases are sweat. They're sweat. Then you get the fried fish and you get the turnover and all them things. I saw the glass case, them are sweat. What beauty. What beauty. And that is what makes us a civilization. We're not just a group of islands and nation states. We're a civilization. And that is why sometimes when I hear my brother, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, making himself a fool when it comes to Guyana, I just want to get a bellyache and say, Brother Ralph, Brother Ralph, People like me, you help to raise, you have to grow up because Ralph is not a three cents intellect. And when I see he behaving the way he behaving today, you are no bellyache. You are no bellyache. You all ever get lashed with bellyache. <laughs> I just want to take a bellyache and put some political beating on Brother Ralph. He's the first man in recent times that used the term the Caribbean civilization. Making himself a, 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 a anyhow, anyhow. I, I hope I go to St. Vincent and meet you and I'm going to tell you the same thing and, 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 and so on. Sister Manza, Brother Vincent. Hey, good night, good night, good night, Dr. Heinz and, and, and your wonderful visitors. Let me say good welcome. Night, good night, good night. Let me say welcome also to, to my cousin. I, I, I bet you didn't know that me and Amanda are cousins. No, I didn't know that. I know you from <laughs> Christian Borg and she's from Linda. I mean, I, you, you would never know because she's much more good looking than I am. <laughs> <laughs> my, you remember, uh, Dr. Hines, my father is from Christian Borg. <laughs> ah, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't. So is your mom from. C. Your mom is quarantine people then? Yep. My mother ah, is the dad is from the daddy from Linden, Christianburg. Yes. So yes. you're a Christianburger. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What 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 are the odds that you would get two Christian burgers in one place at the same time? Can yeah. you imagine? Uh, and I will bank me here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Dr. Hines, just, just to get me out of trouble, I got a third passport. You forget my wife is from Pleasant. So I better I better <laughs> <laughs> I better I better not forget that third connection there. <laughs> Pleasant? Yeah. A man's are too small, as we would say. We would say, yeah, a man's are too small to remember the days of two to two. Two, two to two, Pleasants used to get a party every Sunday. You start from two o'clock in the afternoon and then two o'clock. Two o'clock in the morning. Two to two. <laughs> Pleasants. You know, you know, coincidentally, I heard about that from my mom because she uh, is a trained teacher. Uh -huh. And whilst attending CPCE, she actually lived in Pleasants for a bit. So you heard about it, you know, when she and, and some of the folks like Adam Harris and them would get together and reminisce about the good old days. Good so, old days. yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Two to two, two to two on Sundays. Um, Sister Manza, Brother Vincent, we, 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 we have a lot of work to do tonight. Um, David Rudder asked whether the, 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 um, the, um, uh, the beast must always defeat the beauty. This week, our government, in the image of the beast, appeared before the United Nations Human Rights Commission. Uh, that commission represents the beauty of humanity. And I think you all will agree with me. The beauty defeated the beast. Omanza, since you are the small one here, you <laughs> will go first. <laughs> well, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Hines, um, for having me. I it's listen, it's always a pleasure to sit and particularly with, with my elders and learn and, and listen. It's 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 really something that I find a lot of joy and fulfillment in. Um, so thank you for having me. Uh Unfortunately, last night, the GPL kept me away, but I'm here tonight and hopefully it holds. And um, yeah, look, I, I think the world saw, the world over saw that every rope has an end, you know, every rope has an end. And the PPPC demonstrated its unfamiliarity with accountability when they appeared before that um that committee, they're so much accustomed to um, running roughshod over uh, the, the, the parliamentary systems, the systems that are there that will permit them accountability in a well-organized society, if you understand what I mean. Because there are always options to, 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 to do um, and to take certain actions that are not necessarily um, that don't necessarily lend to stability. So you 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 ex you use those methods first, and the PPP has continued to demonstrate a disregard for parliamentary democracy. They don't answer questions. They don't allow motions. And what we saw was them being called out on the myriad of human rights abuses. What is interesting to me is that the PPP has to really pick a struggle. On one hand, Jack Dio complains that, oh, there's no opposition, the opposition is weak. But when they're called to heal on the international community, oh, it's the opposition that did it. So he really has to decide. But far more telling for me, and I hope <clears throat> that my guy and his brothers and sisters get this message. It is important to speak up and to speak out. It is important to understand that the world is listening and the people are listening. And, you know, these questions came about because Guyanese citizens took the time to write and to make representation and to raise these issues with these various uh, committees. So we must understand that our voices matter. We can't stay silent. We have to speak because it will be noticed. Finally, what we saw was just outright lies. Mm -hmm. 
outright lies. And Brother Vince will talk about how Gail Deshera lied on him, just lied. When it came to the uh, appointment of the chancellor and the chief justice, again, misleading the, the committee, we are currently exploring our options to see what are the um, implications for lying to such a committee because they must be called to account for what are just blatant misrepresentations of the facts on the ground. So I looked on quite interestingly at... Uh, uh, at what transpired, and the government is on the back foot, and Guyanese people must continue to raise their voices. Continue to raise their voices. Amanza is the shadow minister of foreign affairs, so this concerns us, concerns her um, tremendously. Um, Dr. Vincent, the government is on the back foot. That's a cricketing term that has larger significance. It goes, what CLR James said, beyond the Boundary. Boundary. There you go. Over to you, my brother. Well, I, not only are they on the back foot, they're on the back foot while they're getting a lot of bounces. Ah! <laughs> and they obviously don't know how to get out of the way. You know, and, and I, I, I don't think I could even uh, try to even get it said any better than than, than my sister there, Amanzo. Um, but, you know, what, what has happened here? is that these folks are so used to having their way um, to say anything, in, in even in parliament, when they're in Guyana, to say whatever they want to say, they're protected by the speaker. Um, so they get away with this type of stuff. They talk to the people. You know, nobody pays attention. The people get numb to all the lies, and it doesn't matter to them. So now they're before this international forum where the entire world is looking on, and it just they just get there forgotten where that like, she forgot where she was. Mm -hmm. She probably thought because you can tell, you know, she was just, you know, blase, just you know, lackadaisical, you know, in, in her response. As if she even went on the offensive at one time, telling the folks that they, that's an inappropriate question. And she she had to be called out. They're not used to being called out. She was called out by several members of the committee. Um, that you know, when she tried to challenge them, the folks say, Here, we did our homework. Yeah. You know, you're not coming and talking to some little child here. We're, you know, we're, we're very, very um, equipped. We did our research, we did our homework. Everything that we said here, it's credible information. You need to respond. And then, of course, when they put in a position to respond, it's just a pack of lies and they're dodging and weaving again, forgetting where they, where, where, where they came from. And I mean, it, the, the lies were just unbelievable. And you know, sometimes when you lie, you know, you lie to make it, it with some, at least a little bit credible. It's a little bit believable when you lie. But these lies, you know, there's no, no, no sense whatsoever. And it doesn't make any logic, has no logic or sense or, or, or sensibility in it. And, but like I said, they forgot where they came from. And I, I am, I'm beginning to believe now that this lady has really lost it. She, she should apologize um, to the nation. She should apologize to the nation and resign. This lady did not only embarrass herself, she embarrassed an entire nation because, like I said before, you know, when they're before Guyanese, they can get away with it. Now, Guyana is on the map. She has embarrassed the entire nation. She should resign. Uh, for immediately because of the disgraceful or disgraceful performance be, be, before be, be, before this forum. Remember, she didn't go there to represent Gail Teixeira or to represent the PPP. She went there to represent every single person of Guyana. And she should be held accountable now. We should be calling for her to resign immediately. Immediately, because her showing was 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 just was just terrible. I mean, just the answers. The, the woman got up there, and like you know, in, in in my specific case, for example, the woman placed me in Guyana in 2016, working for the Guyana government. When in 2016 I was working for the United States government in a highly sensitive position, and that's what she has done there. Because I did not go to Guyana by the way until 2018, so it's two two years and three months afterward. 
The woman said I was there and I was in charge of this of this PSA. Not that there's anything bad about the PSA, but she, she made it sound as if it was a crime. Because they disagreed with it, it was a crime. And let me tell you something. Okay? Here is the here is the here is the other disingenuous um sentiment that she expressed here. That's that contract that she is berating. It's the same darn contract that Janet Jagan signed in 1999. As a matter of fact, when Trotman signed that contract in, in, in 2016, it even improved because the only thing that Rafael changed in that contract was the royalty that he doubled. So when they come and they start berating this thing as if it's some sort of a crime, that is the exact same contract. And Robert Posada, as a matter of fact, put together the same contract in 2012. That was it there in 1919. So, so it, it's all of this, you know, this this con game that they're playing. And then the next day when she went back there, when she was caught in the lie, because I immediately sent send, send a letter to the UN, and of course the, the news reporters start coming in and say, hey, you, what's going on? Are, are you losing it or something? The woman went back and even looks even more stupid. Guess what she said? She said, well, since he was there from 2019 here again she had all night to go and do her research as to when i arrived she missed that to be given oh since he was there in 2019 like i said i was there in 2018 to start oh since he was there in 2019 he had no problems in implementing the psa well that's that yeah that is but then in the same sentence she said he had no problems in implementing the psa but we can't change that now because it's contract law. So it wasn't contract law for me, right? I'm being, I'm, you know, it's okay for me to go violate the contract law, but they can't change it now because it's contract law. I mean, how stupid could you sum? So that's the, the, the kind of, it's not only are they lying, but they're lying without even making any semblance of, of sense. These people are incompetent to start with, and, 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 and she, for one, should, should, should be removed. She has disgraced disgrace the country in, in, in the eyes of, of, of the war and it should be removed. Amanza, you can comment on that, um, but I want you to zero in on the corruption charges. You know, it never goes away. It never goes away. And even if sometimes we in Guyana get so tired of it and we say, well, it's normative for corruption under the PPP, clearly, clearly for that committee, it's not, it's not the norm. And the Sugate came back, <laughs> came back, came back. Um, uh, over to you, Amanda. The charges of corruption and the way they responded to it. Again, to hear Gil, to share a that there was no investigation because <laughs> nobody made a report. You know, like a colleague of mine uh, said to me, if we follow that logic, we could find a body and don't launch an investigation into it. Yeah. If yes. you follow that logic. Yes. Yes. It's yes. Stands the reason that they have no um they have no answer for these things. They have no answers. And so they keep making it up as they go along. But you know what I understand about this PPPC government? They really are not interested in answering truthfully what they're wanting to do is to put out their messages so that their supporters and those that support this lawlessness could have something to parrot they mm -hmm. really don't care how it sounds you know mm -hmm. because if you cared about how it would come across as a sovereign state as a government you would make a, an effort a sixth form law student could tell you that somebody doesn't have to make a complaint for the police to investigate a matter. We know as well that there is an integrity commission that has statutory powers under legislation to secure integrity in public life. That is what the long title of that act says. Why haven't they commenced an investigation? And, and, and then what they miss, Amanza, is that you all had gone to Parliament and sought was, to introduce was, a motion. I was coming to that. All right. 
opposition right. championed a motion yes. calling for an impartial investigation by international experts. Mm -hmm. And of course, Nadir, the guardian of the um, breaking down of the guardrails in the National Assembly, said no, he's not allowing such a motion. So you see there, there's a complete lack of even believing that they, they should be held accountable. Not even a promise that was made that investigations would happen, made by, I think it was Ropes and Ben, also made by Air Finale. None of it uh, materialized. And you know what my concern is, um, gentlemen, that because this government is so cornered, they will come back to Guyana and they will it out on the people of Guyana because understand these are not people who are of the mindset to repent and change their way and so I expect that they will come back here and you will see them hounding opposition uh, MPs more you will see them hounding people who raise their voices in dissent more because I believe that sometimes they believe in this scorched earth policy. We're okay. If this is what's going to happen, then everybody will feel our wrath type of thing. And so we have to be on the lookout for that. Because, look, the, 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 the performance was abysmal. I felt bad as a Guyanese, you know. And on this issue of corruption... What we have to appreciate is that because Guyana is where it is and because the eyes of the world are now on Guyana, we have to make a concerted effort to tackle corruption with all of the money in the system. Now, it is now even more important that we have robust systems of accountability because corruption not only um, robs the people of the resources getting to them, it, it, it affects foreign direct investment because there are studies that show where there's rampant corruption, foreign direct investment is jeopardized. And so there is a symbiotic relationship almost with the stamping out of corruption and the growth and development of a nation. So to pretend like we could um, disregard its relationship is, is harmful for us as Guyanese, and we cannot afford to normalize corruption. We cannot afford to normalize bribery. We cannot afford to do it because of the deleterious long-term effects. And so I want to encourage us that we begin to advocate for systems, for transparency, for accountability, because it is in our best interest that we so do. Dr. Adams, the man who raised the question that they're going to come back here in Guyana and they are going to want to go after people. Clearly, the vice president has signaled this when he is asking the people to name names of people who they spoke to. And this is coming two weeks after he went to Babujan. And instead of paying homage to Dr. Jagan, he used that platform to threaten to threaten citizens. And here again, he's saying, tell us the names of the people who you talk to. Clearly, another threat. Over to you. Oh, ab absolutely. Um, you know, and, and and again, and I think I think Amanda mentioned it, but and there is no hiding what their intent is. They, 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 this area is the modus operandi of, of this government. Remember, it was the same vice president. It was the same vice president who did the same thing. You remember the, the Washington conference that he is so obsessed with? He did the same thing. You remember before the conference how he was threatening? Who goes to that conference? They're, they're watching them. So it, this is nothing new. Um, and so he, he, he got there yesterday and he was smiling. And, and he, you know, that's what the intent. And I, I bet you that that's what that's what they're doing um and you see and and i think uh, amanda amanda alluded to it you see these folks are they're, they're they're used to talking to to themselves you know within their own echo chamber but the only problem that they have this echo chamber now has grown very very big so there's no echo anymore they got to deal with communities 
such as this international community, because the eyes of the world are on us now. And what we're demonstrating here, Amanda and Dr. Knight, is that we are not ready for prime time. We are not ready for prime time. You know, you know, it, it's it, like like cricket. You know, you you might be a superstar in my in Christian world, for example. I might be a superstar, <laughs> but when I go, you know, play against West Indian players, totally different thing. That's exactly what's happening here. They've been getting away with stuff. They've been, you know, they've got this this dictatorial thing. You know, whatever I say goes. You know, this this imperiousness and 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 high handedness. You know, they can do anything. And even when in 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 the, you know when they're in parliament, which is the you know the highest forum of authority and where people ought to behave in a certain way, you know, and to set the example. That is not even happening there. That's they're even muzzling. They're even muzzling MPs. You know, we're supposed to be our highest you know, point of, of, of representation of the nation. You know, it, when the opposition gets up to speak, they shut down. You can't even get motions through, through that parliament. And that's where they believe that they still are when they go to these international forums. And, you know, this year, this year is just the start of things to come. Trust me, because now that the eyes of the world is upon them, they're going to, they, they, well, I hope that they learn the lesson here. Um, because this, this year is just the start of things to come. And, and especially when the world has looked at them, uh, you know, such as the United States and organizations such as the United States, now they're going to be branded in a certain way. Um, so they did not score any points there. As a matter of fact, um, you know, they, they're, 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 they're going to be labeled now as, as being suspicious and everything, not being, not being honest, not being forthcoming. Um, so they're going to, what happens when you do that? You, you bring more scrutiny upon yourself, and they would be the last set of people to want more scrutiny. That's so this year, this year was a disaster for them, and um, and it, it you know, I it, it was it was probably one of the, the, the best things that that ever happened because we, when we were in Guyana locally, and and even our Caribbean friends, forget about them, you know, the Miamatlis, and and because all of them want, you know, I guess want a little help here and there from because of the oil. So we can't even depend on that that community around us in CARICOM. But hey, you know, the, the, when you're dealing with this international community, the, the powerhouse of the UN, um, it, 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 it's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's an eye-opener. And I hope that the people, people understand that and listen here and not, you know, of course, they've gone out with their propaganda already and they're so barefaced. They're spreading the word that they had. A, this was a successful meeting, as far as they're concerned. I can't remember. I think it was the, the president who came out with some some not nonsensical. But here again, they've got the, the, the this this belief in, in, in Well, I know that they cannot cannot even imagine it. It's just flat out lying and to themselves, to the people to say that this was successful. Um, it it just. I don't know how they expect people to believe it, but it's just, you know, like I always say that, you know, it's like Donald Trump and those folks, right? You could see you could see it on video. You could see it on, in, in picture, and they still deny it. They would still deny, oh, that's not me, or that's not my voice. And that's where they are. To, for them, for this thing to be broadcast to the entire world, and you come back and say, well, oh, we had a, we, you know, we had a very successful meeting or presentation, is incredible when we're seeing it for ourselves. When we've seen it for ourselves. Amanza, I, I want you to respond to these two things. Um, the government likes to say, we I like to ask us, where's the evidence? Where's the documentation? <laughs> Where is the evidence? You and I and 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 Dr. Adams, we were in Washington a couple of months ago, and they were saying the people asked them for the evidence and they didn't have the evidence and and the blah 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 blah. I want you to talk about that in relation to yeah. what happened this week. And also to our supporters who sometimes say, you all talk too much. What we want is action. Yes. No, yes. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so like I said earlier, the, the Ali administration has to decide on their characterization. We don't do anything. We didn't have any evidence. But now that they've been confronted with the evidence, oh, 
they, it's, the, it's the propaganda that they are responding to. It's the opposition. It's the opposition. Everything. Yes, the opposition propaganda. I want to make something very, very clear. The UN Committee on Human Rights will not ask certain questions unless they have certain pieces of evidence yes. before them. Yes. And when they ask you a question, assume that they know the answer before mm -hmm. you give it. And it is in your best interest to answer as truthfully as you possibly can. I want to say to the people who continue to say, oh, you all are talking too much, you all are talking too much. Look, sometimes the peaceful route to something takes a little while longer, but it is far more beneficial in the end because you, you, you are able to preserve the fabric of your society. And so we have a duty to continue to advocate and to talk and to represent and to advocate for our people until we believe that we can't anymore. Because look, I'll say this, you know, the, the same Convention on Human Rights says that it is important that we uphold these human rights lest man as a last resort should rebel. So hmm. even in that convention in its preamble says, you know what? Everybody got a limit. And so we have to continue <clears throat> to make use of all of the lawful means of addressing this. Look, there are times that we may have to engage in extra parliamentary activities, protests, picketing, etc. all of these, the right to assemble, all of these are protected by our constitution. But as far as we can, we have to be uh, sober, we have to be vigilant, we have to take our time, compile the evidence and present it. There may be a time, there may come a time that that may not suffice, but I am happy that there is a clear demonstration before our very eyes that the years of advocating, of writing, of, of, of sending information, of meeting here with the um, diplomatic community, you know, I'm very mindful of sometimes I get flack for, oh, she's always meeting here. This is why that is necessary. Because if you are not in the room, your story does not get told. And so we have to be in the room. We have to make sure that our message gets to the ear of the pe people that are important. And you saw it for all the world to see. They were put on stage and could not answer any one of those um, issues uh, credibly. So for me, I, I will tell you personally, I was encouraged because there are times that you yourself would wonder, is this making an impact? And what we saw was that it does make an impact. And so I am even more resolved to continue to advocate, to continue to reach out to the diplomatic community, to continue to interact beyond Guyana so that our story, the story of the working class Guyanese, of the poor and ordinary Guyanese gets told and that they have a voice in the room. They have a voice in the room. And I'm hearing this. Um, for the second time for the day, um, one of my colleagues is on this show here and at our statutory party executive meeting today. He was making the very point that you were making, that our party and, in fact, all the parties in Guyana have to find a way to talk to the diplomatic community and talk to people. Uh, uh, and the frustration that our people feel, uh, understandably, pushes them to think that there is only one route, one linear way to deal with these people. You know, um, and you know, and you know, the, the, Dr. Hines, let me let me make this point. Mm -hmm. I understand that people are frustrated. Mm -hmm. It is not that we don't hear it, but as leaders, we cannot afford to not be sober and temperate. Because civil strife, as you're seeing in Mozambique right now, as you're seeing yeah. in Gaza right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Th that, that road takes you to places that you don't want to go and causes you a price that you don't you can't pay. 
And so, yes, right takes time. Martin Luther King said it, the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends towards justice. And so as leaders, we have to, as far as we possibly can, use our lawful means at our disposal. But like I said, even that UN Rights Convention says to us that everything has a limit. And so I, I continue to hope that we as Guyanese, and, and this is why it is important that we continue to speak across the, the political um, divide, because this is not a APNU, AFC, it's your WPA, it's your PPP, it's you. this is a Guyanese issue. And so every Guyanese has a stake in ensuring that our society does not descend into chaos and into anarchy. Because the, the sad reality is, as Bojo Banton says, who can afford to run will run, but what about those who can't? They will have to stay. And so it is about mitigating those risks and, and, and really doing the hard work to make sure that while we agitate and while we represent, we are able to preserve the fabric of our society. Um, sister and brother, I want us to um, zero in on two, two developments um, that may have not gotten the kind of attention that they ought to get because of what happened uh, in Geneva this week. The first issue is the, um, the Venezuelans have declared a state officially. A cre they have created a new state in Esequibo. That's one. And second, the visit of the CIA director of the United States to Guyana. Um, uh, the, the viewers of this program um, are aware that I've said Guyana is now in the big league. <laughs> We're not no little teeny bit country anymore. We used to say Jamaica is the small country with the big name. I think we have eclipsed Jamaica now as the small country, the big name. Jamaica got two and a half million people going on to three million now. Guyana got less than a million people. So in that in that sense, we are smaller um, than 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 um, than Jamaica. And we are the fastest growing petrol state right now. And Dr. Thomas, who knows much about these things, he says we are, in terms of when we started with oil and where we are now, we are the fastest growing petrol state of all time. We're not even five years into oil yet. And look how we are galloping. Um, here we are. Um, the CIA director has visited Guyana. I can't remember in my lifetime a CIA director visiting Guyana, all right? The CIA is here. We have had Secretary of State came here twice in three or four years. Um, and so the visit of the CIA director and the, um, the, the, the creation by the Venezuelans of this new state, in violation, I think, of the Argyle Agreement. Um, Amanda, since you have the floor, I'm going to start with you and then over back to um, Dr. Adams. Well, let's start with the, with the issue of the CIA director visiting. My only comment would be that, you know, the CIA director just does not hop on a plane for um, a joyride. Um, clearly, there are matters that could only have been said in person mm -hmm. and messages that had to be delivered in person. And so Diana is now in the big leagues, and I think our leaders have been put on notice. Um, as it relates to the Venezuelans uh, and the Guyana-Venezuela controversy, Dr. Hines, Dr. Adams, I have, I have been saying this for the longest while and sounding the alarm for some time at the risk of being labeled xenophobic. You know, I heard the PPP say that I'm xenophobic, I'm anti this and anti that. I'm not anti anything. I have made it very, very clear that our party's position continues to be that in keeping 
with our covenant to protect the human rights and dignity of any person within our country, to that degree, we will so do. And we will uphold, we will provide all of the necessary humanitarian support, etc. We have to separate issues here, however. Let's start with what happened today and work our way backwards. I have been saying that this government continues to be asleep at the wheel and they continue to bury their heads in the sand. Because whilst Irfan Ali was somewhere the other day exchanging rum with Maduro, mm -hmm. Maduro was proceeding with the passage of his organic law. Understand that he has never taken his eyes off of his objective. But we appear to be so gullible. And you saw your friend Ali taking the opportunity to smile and to gaff and as if this as if this does not concern the very life and destiny of the 800 and something thousand Guyanese that he's supposed to be representing. And so we see today, as he, uh, Venezuela has gone ahead and purported to establish this state called Guyana Esequibo, in clear breach of the Argyle Declaration, in clear breach of the ICJ ruling, that none of the that neither of the parties should do anything to exacerbate this situation. Venezuela has stuck to its guns. It is only the Air Finale administration that has been jumping all around and engaging in puppetry. That is the first point that I want to make. The second point that I want to make is that I have been calling for some time now for a sound immigration policy. Why? Why is that important? It is important for the protection of Guyanese. There has to be a policy that sets out exactly what our framework is, that sets out the paths to Guyanese citizenship, and that protects the advantage of being Guyanese. I have no apologies for saying that the patrimony of this nation first and foremost belongs to Guyanese, and we share with others out of the overflow and the bounty. But it cannot be a situation where, because of our lax immigration laws, because of the absence of an immigration policy, that Guyanese are going to be relegated to second and third class citizens <clears throat> in our own country. I heard uh, Vice President Jack Dio the other day, contrary to what they told us before, that 90% of the 60,000 odd Venezuelans who are now in Guyana are of Guyanese parentage. Yet, the figures we requested from the minister and received does not even meet a thousand naturalizations. And so the stage is being set for a massive granting of citizenship to people who are not legally entitled to Guyanese citizenship. Why is this troubling? Particularly in the context of Venezuela, you have and you are combating a belief that Esequibo belongs to them. And this is not that these citizens are necessarily holding this point of view with malice. It is simply that they have been indoctrinated to think and to believe that Esequibo belongs to them. And so you grant citizenship to people who are not legally entitled to it. Let's work our way 10, 15 years down the line and see and understand how it could result in a group of people with a, polit with a, with a certain belief about two thirds of our territory dictating the political direction of our country. And that is the danger. It is about the resting away of the future of Guyana from Guyanese. Because to the degree that you give citizenship and the right to vote 
to somebody who is not entitled to it is the degree to which you negate my vote as a barn Guyanese, as somebody who mother, father, born here. And that is the importance of what we are talking about. And because we are talking about our territorial integrity, because we are talking about the sanctity of our borders, we cannot have a government in place that is willing to gamble with our future in this manner? Can you imagine if because Barra Jaglio is intent on opening the floodgates, the people who are not legally entitled to citizenship, and it results in persons with nefarious intents making their way into our NDCs, making their way into our RDCs, making their way into our National Assembly, It is dangerous and we have to proceed with caution. And I have no apologies for advocating for the protection of our Guyanese brothers and sisters. Now, I wanna make this final point. That is not to say that we do not welcome people who want to come here, work, pay their taxes, make a contribution and build a life. The two are not mutually exclusive. The point is, that there has to be an advantage retained for me being a born Guyanese or my parents are of Guyanese lineage that were born in this land. And so what we are saying is that there has to be a more circumspect process of ascertaining who are descendants of Guyanese parentage and entitled to it. There has to be a process that says and currently, the, the citizenship law is very lax in this regard. That says, look, this is the process by which you, you, you will attain uh, citizenship. Because look, it is important that the benefits of this bounty, that we are able to pass that down to our Guyanese brothers and sisters and the future generations, our children and our children's children. And we cannot be apologetic for that, uh, Dr. Heinz and Dr. Adams. We can't apologize for that. You want to come, you want to work, you want to build your life, you want to pay your taxes, you want to abide by the laws of this land, you are welcome. But we will not support this government in whittling away the protections of Guyanese, particularly in the context of a Western neighbor that has just passed a law that says that our Esequibo is theirs. Let me finally end by saying this. Let's juxtapose the treatment of our Haitian brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Now, mind you, Guyana is not party to any of those refugee conventions, you know. Guyana is, however, party to the revised treaty of Shagaramas. And so there is a legal basis for us to have free movement with the Haitians. But what was the finale's first order of business? Revoke that. How dare you now try to stand as a champion of the Haitian people on the international stage? So Guyanese will have to speak. And come next elections, we are going to have to vote this government, this PPPC government out of office because they are demonstrated that they are quite content to play with our future to play with our country's future and to, by sheer negligence and lack of foresight, jeopardize the integrity of our borders. Dr. Adams, Amanza's added <laughs> a third element there. So you're dealing with the visit of the CIA director. You're dealing with the Venezuelans declaring officially the state in Esequibo, and she has added Haiti um, to the list. The floor is yours. Well, I, no, I, I don't think you can get um, a, a more thorough explanation of this situation um, than, than what we just heard here from Amanda. Of course, she's as big as a, an expert on this subject and this issue as, as, as anybody that, that I know of. But let me, let me also add my little bit in that you know, you know, I was brought up in 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 my profession and and everything else. It, everything starts with leadership, 
and we have no leadership in Guyana. And Maduro obviously recognizes that and is capitalizing on it. Here we have a leader who, by, just by a, a phone call from Gonzalez to say, "Hey, I, I'm gonna, I, I need for you to head down to my way for us to have this, 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 this meeting or this conference, you know, that develop into the into the Argyle, um, you know, agreement, without even an agenda, without even an agenda." Now you can't tell me. So they they they're just taking advantage of that weakness and that incompetence. So Maduro is just having his is you know doing whatever he wants to do, and we are not even organized. You know even even Amanzo, I was it, and I know I've been listening to her calling. They set up this this committee or was it the foreign affairs to deal with this situation. And a man's up to yesterday or day before, she's been calling to, for a meeting. But here again, of this, which which should have included, you know, the opposition. I think a man's is on that committee. But you know, they you know, they, they, again, it's the whole modus operandi. It's within that echo chamber that they want those few folks. They don't care about competence and the exports such as the man's to come. And 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 you know, give them you know a few some guidance and direction. They don't want that. It's us, and then we we getting taken to the cleaners with Maduro and people like Gonzalez. Now this is a guy. This imagine our leader is gonna go with a guy Gonzalez, who was caught with with a with, on this picture getting the highest award in Venezuela, and then claim that just like if he didn't know. Just like if he didn't know. So here's a guy. How could you trust somebody like that? Mia Motley was the same, same darn thing. Mia Motley went and had the, the highest award, a red carpet award from, uh, you know, red, red carpet visit to Venezuela and received their highest award also. So here are the two people who are running the show for us. Um, and so what do you expect? Um, so, the, so that's the situation with it's weak leadership. And some, you know, we have no strategy, no plan as to how to deal with the situation. We even set up a committee, but we, the, 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 these guys, the leaders that we have, they have no interest or no idea um, as to planning and executing a plan, a strategy. Now, let me let me say, let me go back to this human to the to the, um, to the UN. Um, the, um, you know, the UN meeting in, in, in Geneva, because, you know, I, I think Amanda touch are you, you touching it in terms of us not being able to answer the question. My understanding is that these, the issues were posted about two weeks ago on the UN website. So it's not a matter of fact, they did they, they not know the questions that they were going to be asked. So the people weren't hiding anything to surprise them. It was posted just again, they, they weren't they weren't even interested because of their arrogance um, and don't care attitude. They weren't even interested in preparing for that meeting. They just walked up there, and because of their arrogance, and they believe that they're in, in Guyana, they believe that they can go shoot from the hip um, and 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 convince this those folks like they do um, in 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 our environment. The the questions were posted. They, they did not prepare. It's like all of us how we prepare for exams. It doesn't matter. Didn't matter for them, and I, you know, this. So this here is a rude awakening for them. So that's so it shows the in, the incompetence maybe, and and the 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 arrogance if nothing else. They walked in there. They didn't have to be, be prepared because that's what they used to be doing. That is why she, that is why she looks so puzzled at some of these questions because it was posted. Those questions were posted. Those issues were posted. You and I would have been prepared. We would have recognized that this year is, you know, it, it, this year is a very important, uh, going to be a very important forum that I'm going before, and with with, with my, you know dire consequences depending on how it turns out, and you know we would have been prepared if we had any if we had any pride, or or dignity, and respectfulness not only for UN but but for the people that we represent, the, all of the Guyanese people. But it doesn't matter to them. That's the way they operate. They went there. It didn't matter what, what information was there. It held to hell with everybody. And then 
then want to go on the offensive against these people, telling them that the question, the question is odd and inappropriate. That's what that's that's what we are dealing with here. Um, you know something about your security in the U.S. Um, do you think that the um, CIA director came by to eat some cook up and no and, and fry fish and, and some roti and curry? No, no, folks like those, and it's not only him. You remember, you remember Pompey was yes, yes, yes. So, and all those congressmen and every you know who who've been visiting all of those visits we're getting. Um, let, yeah, of course, it, it it's no secret that, and you know when you know when I was where 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 I was also, we look at at at, at every nation, and of course we look at, we look out for our interest. You know, like I I, I mention all the time. That when we had the big economic crisis of twenty, the international crisis of twenty to um, two thousand eight, you know, I was required. I was required to go to to to, to the MIT School of Sloan School of Business, and we're at the MIT Sloan and Harvard put together a program where my I had to go there like every six months for two weeks with all of the the CEOs and, and the, the executives of all the major US corporate, including Exxon. And you know what it was? It wasn't for to do math and science and engineering. It was, how do we keep America competitive? How do we figure out what happened in 2000, you know, 2008? And how do we make sure that, that that doesn't happen again? And that meant studying every single country, especially our competitors. You know, like the five, we used to call it five Asian miracles. But my point is, everything, you know, this here is not just haphazard that he jumped on a plane. Everything is integrated. And the thing is, you know, that's just why, you know, I so love the U.S. system. Everybody, every agency has its role. But we all know what each other are doing. It's integrated. It's not that the State Department is going to go visit. It might be something that, the U.S. Department of Energy has triggered, you know, because, because of national security, because we own the nuclear weapons complex. And but the State Department comes against it. It's the same thing with oil. You know, the the Energy Department may understand, you know, the reserve and the the the, the critical nature of what's going on. So they've got to make sure that we secure this asset, that we have some influence over this asset. We're not going to want anybody to come and interfere. So it's all, and at, at the same time, we don't want a government that we cannot trust and, you know, some that you're probably going to get an uprising because people are not treated well. So this whole United Nations stuff with the Human Rights Commission, if you believe that the U.S. government is not watching it, you know, you got a, a, something else coming for you because they are, because the one thing they want is stability in these countries and especially now we've got to depend on that oil from Guyana it's about stability so that is why that guy was, was, was down there yeah. I'm, answer, I'm not in the habit of um putting my guests on the spot um and and discuss you know party matters um mm -hmm. but I, I i i have to ask you this question and and, and um dr vincent adams when i look back at the history of opposition politics in Guyana. Mm -hmm. um, whenever our country has been up against bad governance, there was always an umbrella opposition um, group. We go back to the Committee in Defense of Democracy in the 1970s, the Citizens Committee, the Patriotic Coalition for Democracy, the joint opposition parties that eventually morphed into the APNU and the APNU AFC. And um, I am pulling my ear out of my head and I, so that I don't have none now, that we are in this, we are up against a formation here a government formation that we have never seen before, for obvious reasons. Eh? Time has, has moved on. The world has evolved. Guyana has evolved. We are now a petrol state. But we don't have one of those umbrella opposition organization um, 
uh, uh, that 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 is in a sense bringing the order of, and it's not just opposition political parties because in the past you have had individuals from quote unquote civil society who were willing to stick their neck out and to come um, in, in in into this. What what are your thoughts on the absence um, uh, or, or, or of 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 a, a kind of joint opposition movement? Um, in addition to what we have going on. Oh, absolutely. Um, look, I, I completely agree that there has to be a reinvigoration. And yes, the APNU, as you know, was conceptualized with the idea of having everyone um, with, the, with, with, with interests that intersect coming together under one big umbrella. And so politically there is that. There also is a place for the trade unions, for example, because labor has always played an important role in the struggle for workers' rights and for the preservation of, of human rights and dignity. The churches also have an important role to play but I will be the first to admit, Dr. Hines, that I think people are weary and wary, if you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And so I think it is for us as leaders to begin to go out into the communities, well, to continue to go out into the communities and to continue to speak and to interact. You see, this has to be built in addition to the interacting with the diplomatic community, there also has to be a boots on the ground type approach. And so those two coming together is what will form that, um, that, that resistance that we need to begin to see. We have work to do in terms of getting ourselves together. And I have no bones about saying that because like I tell people, I don't talk with what in my mouth. We have work to do and we have to continue to get our house in order so that we could get this nation in order. And it begins with leadership. It begins with us as the political leaders understanding that we have a duty. This is not about what a manza wants or who think they should be what. It has to do with the people of Guyana who are depending on us to do what is best for them and to continue their in the, the representation of their interests in the best possible manner. And so I agree that there is a need uh, for that. There is also a need for us to continue to speak to the consciousness of our people. Lee Kuan, you said something that is very instructive to me. You can't <clears throat> live in first world infrastructure with a third world mentality. And so we have got to begin to lift the consciousness of our people. And I'm, I'm hopeful because I see signs of it happening. Social media has played an important role in enlightening our people to what is possible, to the, to the fact that more is possible, that we don't have to accept mediocrity, that Guyanese can actually enjoy a good life given the bounty of this land. So we have um, a duty as leaders, to raise the consciousness of our people. We have to eschew division and strife. The PPP, Barjag Ali, they thrive on division and strife. They thrive on sowing ethnic um, and race, uh, racial strife. They believe that because you speak on the issue of race, they love to brand you a racist. But what they are failing to appreciate is that in this global village that we now live in, a disunited Guyana is prey to anybody that would take advantage of her 
And this is why Maduro is taking advantage because he looks and he sees that there is still there is still not yet an understanding here that we are in this one boat. There is still the possibility of people race baiting. And it will cause division and strife. And this is why, gentlemen, the PPP never places emphasis on national unity. Never places emphasis on national unity. You'll remember leading up to the referendum, there was this flurry of nationalism as if you standing up and forming the map of Guyana with your hands and, 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 and having these formations will somehow deter Venezuela. You speak to the average Venezuelan citizen and they will tell you that they believe Esiquibo belongs to them because they have been taught it from nursery school. What are we teaching our children? How are we embedding in them that sense of patriotism? But you know what the PPP understands? They understand the day that Guyanese begin to appreciate the fact that if we don't unite and start voting on policies and on principles rather than race, that we will be consumed by an ever-globalizing world, the day that we understand that, it's over for the PPP because they only thrive on this unity. Look at what they're going to communities to do. They will go into the community and they will pick two or three of the influential people. They will enrich them and cause them to be the gatekeepers to anything that you as a citizen would want. Mm -hmm. So instead of a citizen being able to approach the state apparatus or, or, or the government in his own right as a citizen for anything or any service. You got to go through all of these gatekeepers. That is what they do. Is it filtering down to the average villager? No, it's not. No, it is not because it is all about domination and control. They find a few, enrich them, and have them exert influence over the rest of the of the community and so Guyanese are forever robbed of standing in their full rights as Guyanese citizens and we must we must we must stand up against that now they must build the systems they must have government that works for the people and so the people of Guyana could enjoy a good life it is high time we are entitled to it Dr. Adams well no I I mean how, how could I not agree with with everything that the manza said again you know that 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 thoroughness um but let, let me add my few words here and and she was absolutely correct it comes from from you know leadership of course and i the other pillar that i had there the other, the other two pillars leadership that comes with accountability and trust and what has happened here over the, 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 the past years, of course, you know, in our you gotta earn trust from you know from the people. And what has happened is is wanting to say that to try to have a strong, because that's what's required, a strong opposition, civic society, the union, and I, I'm glad that Amanza mentioned the union, which is very, very important. I grew up in Linda and and where we used to have union strike during the Denver days and going where the box like used to strike all the time. But so what happens is in in, in, in the context of Guyana, you know, we when we're in the opposition, you know, we we you know we want everybody to be, you know, we 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 bash the, the government in power regardless of which party it is. And then we promise all kinds of stuff and we said that we're gonna do different. But when we get into office, we forgot how we got in there. And, you know, with, with the trust that the people have given to us to get there. So guess what happened? People lose trust. They get despondent. They don't want to participate now in the system. And that's a key part where we do not, we forget where we came from. And I've seen it for a time. Um, and we've got to change. We've got to change that mentality or even a culture. You know, it, it, it's just as if that's the way that we were taught to operate. And I think that that is the key. 
you know, it's not what you say you're going to do when you're out of office, but what do you do when you get in, in terms of maintaining that trust that those people have, have, have put in you. And I think, I think that, that hopefully, hopefully, you know, we're going to, in the opposition that we currently have here, that ought to be one of the things that we ought to make sure that we've come, that we will commit ourselves to, because I can tell you, I, I am one of those that don't think that, that, that we satisfy that requirement when we are in office. Of course, we had a big disadvantage with COVID and, and everything else. We made a lot of significant progress, but we failed to communicate, first of all, all the progress, all the good things that we do. And we fail in a lot of respect um, where we did not deliver the way that we said we we're going to deliver. And on that note of self-criticism, um, yeah. go ahead, Amanda. No, yeah, I, I, I want to agree with, with Dr. Adams. You know, I think it comes down to understanding what servant leadership is, mm -hmm. you know, and understanding that as government, we are responsible to serve the nation. Look, look at the word minister. Look at the etymology of that word. Look at what it means. It means to minister to to help, to us. That is the nature of government. It must work for the people. Now, I am a big believer in doing what you say. And so for me, it is important that we get our houses in order as well. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, you, you can, Martin Luther King said something that was so important. Darkness can drive out darkness, only light can. And so you have to begin to represent the antithesis of the darkness and the corruption that is happening here in order for it to go. We're not in a competition to see who could be more dictatorial. This is not, that, that will not bring Guyanese citizens to the life that we deserve. So we have to keep our promises and we have to understand that when you hold these offices, that you're not there to be served. You are there to serve. You understand? You are there as the servant of the people. We have got this thing all twisted. Yep. You have complaints about, oh, when, 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 when people get to office, you can't reach them on the phone, etc. <laughs> now I understand that look as a minister you will have competing responsibilities but certainly mechanisms must be put in place so that when your constituents come their concerns must be addressed even if they don't speak with you we have to end this nonsense of oh you got to talk to the minister before you get your matter resolved the system must work it must work and it must work for the people of guyana Yep. And so I can't I can't criticize when I'm doing the same thing. It does not work and it, it causes the trust to be eroded. And we have to take stock of the shortcomings because nobody's perfect and nothing is done perfectly where we erred. And we have to commit, Dr. Hines, taking the lessons that we have learned to doing better. For the people of Guyana, I am sure about one thing, that this parliamentary opposition is better for Guyana than what we currently have. But we also have to take stock of ourselves and we have to bring our A game to the table to represent the people of Guyana. Uh, and on that note of self-criticism, which is a necessary ingredient in forward-looking politics. I want to say thank you, Amanza, for coming through. Again, thank you, uh, Dr. Adams. I, Amanza, I, I noticed you were confusing two doctors on a program that you were on. And, <laughs> yes. and I, was, I yes. was laughing my way through. I, yes. And I was yes. saying, well, you know, that, that's, a, that's a reflection that there's camaraderie on on our side oh absolutely <laughs> oh absolutely look there is not a time that i come on this program that i'm not enlightened and that i'm not motivated because you know what i understand about you dr Hines, your spirit is for guyana 
Yeah, yeah, and yep. it, it shines through all the time. And then to boot, I find out that you're a rotherite. Ah, <laughs> on the next, yeah, well, let me, be, uh -huh. before I leave, before you know, and, and a man's again touching on, on a key on a key point here that that is very important. And again, it's a culture thing. I remember when I was when I was joining the EPA, the board told me, Doctor Adams, you know, because I had all these ambitious things that you know to implement, and 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 the, she said. And the, the board member told me, no, this here is a totally different culture. You're going to see for yourself. And, you know, and the one thing, the the, the the foundation, the main foundation, I indoctrinate every member of staff that you work for the people. Every morning, I say, when you folks Absolutely. come in here, when you cross that gate, when you come in here, always remember. And I, I'm going to give you a story to prove that here we are. You know, short of cash and everything. Two old Indian folk from the as you could, but travel all night long. So I, I got out to my office, walking out, and I'm seeing them. You know, you can see they're tired. So I, you know, I, so how, how are you doing? How if, uh, well, you know, we're trying to, to to catch the boat to get back. You know, so I said, what's the problem? So well, you know, we came here with four hundred thousand dollars to pay. You know, the whatever fees, the back fees, because I. Threaten folks if you don't come and pay your stuff, you you know you you you're in, you're in bad shape. I said, so what's the problem? They showed me the envelope. They said, well, you know, it's lunch time and the staff is is you know busy. I was like, knock on the door. So I said with the with the with the CEO, not the CEO, the, the chief financial officer. I said, here, you know, you've got some people out there. All six of them are sitting having lunch. Well, chief, you know, we've got rules here. We've got to have our lunch. I said, who you think buying is buying that lunch that you're having? It's those, those two people out there. I said, get them in here right now, collect their money. Well, we, you know, we like I said, we're gonna follow. I said, let me tell you something. Is one person setting the rules here, and they, they refused to. You know what I did? I said, give me, give me the receipt book. I took them down to my office. Within about two minutes, I gave them the receipt. You know what I did? I called the financial officer. And I said, I want an ads in the newspapers tomorrow for a CFO. There you go. There and you that go. was it. The, the, the guy resigned. But but again, it's accountability. We've got a culture in Ghana where, where, where government employees especially believe that the people work for them instead of the opposite. And that's and just because of that, that, that simple principle that, that, that I inculcated in the EPA, the EPA, the, the whole attitude turned around, you know, with, within a very, very short period of time and the performance and everybody, you know, were and, and the people, that's what they want. A, a lot of people think that, that the employees are against, you know, against good practices. And that is not the case. Employees are glad. To, but if you have the lackadaisical way and there's no leadership, that's what they, they that's exactly how they become. People Thank you very much, Dr. Adams. Thank you very much. People want to work hard, take care of their families, earn a living. It's a basic yeah. human need. And once you support that, we will get the best from our from our, um, from our our humanity. Thanks Absolutely. for having us, Doc. And Thank you very play, much. And, um, play I, the Warlord on the next show. Uh, yes, yes. I'll have to play the Warlord in the next, on the next, <laughs> on the next show. The next time you're about. For your fellow Thank Rudder, you. right? God Thank bless. you very much. Yes, uh, you know, you know, when I first saw David Rudders way back in the seventies, he came as a backup singer with Charlie Roots and played yes. at the national yes. park. Played yes. at the national park, and and then he burst burst onto the scene Incredible. in the nineteen eighties. Incredible social commentary. I think they call him the high priest. The high priest. The high yes. priest. Yes. If nothing else, I've learned a lot about Calypso here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm, I'm still working on slotting in that. That that calypso show that we talk Absolutely. about, calypso Absolutely. podcast. So um, keep uh, I'll keep you I'll keep you posted. All right, good night, gentlemen. So, thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Nice, nice seeing you, man. Yes. Thank you, and thank you all for staying with us. I'm hopping over to Mark Ben shop in a couple of minutes, so you all will have to deal with my face later on tonight. But thank you all for staying with us for another hour and forty-five minutes. My God, um, and um, it's the weekend. Stretch out a little bit, do something that you don't normally do. Um, hang out with the family, um, you know, and 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 come back on Monday for us to continue 
the struggle because without struggle, there will be no progress. So said Frederick Douglass, Frederick Douglass. Thank <laughs> you.